Everybody's a suspect. Coming to get you, Barbara. Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Terrifier 2. Now there is going to be spoilers in this review guys, so if you haven't seen the movie yet then please don't watch this. If you don't mind spoilers, um, or if you've seen the movie then continue watching if you wish. Now we know that Terrifier from 2017 was a very, very brutal movie. And it is an independent film and so is Terrifier 2. So when you get what you got out of Terrifier, you know, I watched the movie and I was pretty shocked when I first watched the first movie. So, you would feel like nothing would phase you if you see a Terrifier 2, because what are they going to do that could top what we saw in Terrifier? And, I don't know how you feel about this guys, but they absolutely topped anything that they'd done in the first movie. If you weren't sure if they were going to top it, the first couple of minutes of this film just shows you how brutal this film was going to be, how brutal Art the Clown was going to be as well. We also get more of Art as a character in this film, which I do like. I like that they explore these characters in sequels. This one, Art felt more supernatural than just human. If he felt supernatural in the first movie, that's fine. It didn't really feel that way to me. But in this one, you can tell there's obviously more to Art than just his art of killing. We also get into the mind of Art the Clown. There is a scene at the start where he's playing with a little girl, um, he's playing patty cake with her, and I thought it was a little girl that was with him, but then someone watches Art from a distance, almost playing with himself. So this little girl is in his imagination, as far as we're aware, but throughout the film we see this girl again, as so do other people. So I'm not quite sure how they interpret this little girl, is she actually there or is she in the mind of art and whatever's in the mind of art also gets into the minds of his victims they don't quite make that clear which is good i don't want to be spoon fed everything i think that's why terrifier 2 is more deep than terrifier 1 because not only does it just show you the blood guts and gore it gets into the mind of the audience we're introduced to sienna and jonathan brother and sister in this film they're the main characters sienna's this cautious but pretty brave girl and then you've got a brother Jonathan who is a bit of a loner but he is into serial killers and he also wants to dress up as Art the Clown for Halloween so although they're very different from each other you can tell that they love each other and that's what I like about this film because similar to Jeepers Creepers that I've mentioned before you need to have main characters that you can get behind. Now this film is over two hours long. It's two hours and 18 minutes long. It's a very long film. But what that runtime does is it gives you the opportunity to get behind Sienna, to get behind Jonathan as characters because the character development is good and it really builds up the characters for the last scene or the last part of the film. There is a bit of foreshadowing throughout the film where we've got this dagger, this mini sword, that Sienna owns. She was given it to given it uh, by her dad, and they're they're alluding to this dagger or sword, whatever you want to call it, as having powers. Now, at, at first, I thought it's not going to have powers because this isn't a supernatural type movie. But as we see the movie progress, it is more than just a, a slasher film. There is that supernatural element to the film. So when it goes back and forth to and from the sword. Yes, we, we as an audience get to see that there is something to this sword that we are going to see in the finale. There's something that they don't overly explain, in fact they don't really explain it, and that is Sienna and Jonathan's dad who died. Um, we find out that they ha he had a tumour and through his time, the last months of his life, he acted weird, he was, he was drawing things, he was even collecting clippings of Art the Clown, his victims, and drawing Art the Clown, but he also drew his own character, this warrior princess, that he always imagined his daughter to grow up to be like. Um, and she does that, she dresses up as his character for Halloween, but before he dies, he goes crazy, um, and he doesn't die from the tumour, he dies from a car crash, um, and he burns alive. So. There was something about that storyline that I thought we were going to get somewhere. I was hoping that they weren't going to do this and they didn't do it, thankfully. I thought that it was going to turn out to be 
Art the Clown was Sienna and Jonathan's dad because when Jonathan has his first encounter with Art, he doesn't kill him, he just drugs him and knocks him out. Now Art usually just kills his victims, but he didn't kill him because it was his dad, fortunately. He killed him because he wanted to lure Sienna to the Terrifier, which was one of the, the theme park rides in this, what seems to be an abandoned um, carnival. If you didn't already realise guys, Sienna's costume is just well, as the movie progresses, we do get into that confirmed supernatural element of the film where we've got Art driving a car with the little girl, who's also like a mini Art. She's talking on the phone to Sienna in Jonathan's voice, so that just confirms that this movie isn't just a slasher movie anymore. I felt like the finale was really long, and that's not a, a complaint. It was around 45 minutes long, this finale, and like I said, the movie's on for 2 hours and 18 minutes. There is a scene near the start that's a dream sequence that Sienna has where she's dreaming about uh, meeting Art the Clown on, on this game show or some sort of show. Um, and then it kind of goes back to that in the finale of the film where she's having this dream sequence with the power of the sword slash dagger. And it sounds silly. But leading up to that, you get to see why it leads up to that with Sienna getting powers, whether it's mental powers or supernatural powers. But she goes back to that dream sequence where she's stuck in this kind of Houdini-like tank and she doesn't know how to get out and she's dying and she's got the wound. But the wound is kind of healing up from the power of the sword. And then she gets that one last gasp to go and fight Art and save her brother from dying. I will say this about the finale, and not just the finale, but the whole movie, they they were really bold in what they were trying to achieve, and I think they achieved most of what they wanted to achieve because the movie was bigger. It had a bigger budget, of course. The acting was a lot better. The acting was great and terrifying, but for an independent film, you would expect there to be a lot of, you know, more bad than good, but the exact same with Terrifier, there was more good than bad, and with the runtime of two hours and 18 minutes, Although it was long, it didn't feel like that long. Yes, some of the scenes were drawn out. You know, the dream sequence, for example, at the start, it must have been about five or six minutes long. It could have been one or two minutes. And most of the scenes that we got in the film were quite bulky, but they did tell a story, which was good, so that's why it didn't really drag. If I'm being honest, though, the movie could have been about an hour and 45, an hour and 50 minutes long, but then you wouldn't get the the build-up of the characters that, that it was building up to that finale. So as much as I, I think it could have been condensed, I still didn't mind the long runtime because the movie played out really well and it didn't drag one bit. There was talking throughout, but art was always there. We got more of art in this one than we did in the, the first movie, I believe. His killings were just absolutely brutal. If you thought the killings in the first movie were brutal, <laughs> which they were, it amps it up to a hundred in this one. It was so disgusting. There were some scenes that I really couldn't watch, although I did, but I felt like I couldn't watch it. The practical effects in this film were top notch. You get movies that are $20 million budgets, horror movies that use CGI, but this one has a micro budget and it manages to give us those practical effects that we got back in the day. And it was just amazing to watch. It was disgusting, but also amazing to watch. There is a crazy mid credit scene starring Chris Jericho where Victoria, the survivor of the original massacre or with uh, Art almost killing her, she's in this mental home and she looks like she's pregnant and looks like she's given birth. And she writes on the wall, Vicky loves Art. So we're thinking this might be Art's baby somehow. And it's not, she actually gives birth to Art's head. It does sound batshit crazy, but it was just so mesmerising to watch. Looking back on Sienna as a character, the actress that plays her was absolutely f phenomenal. She was just so mesmerising to watch. She was beautiful, but she was also a really good actress. And Sienna as a character was very interesting because she, was, she had that instinct like Laurie Strode. She had the fight in her like Sydney Prescott, but she also knew how to have a good time. She wasn't this prude who would always go, oh no, I'm not doing that. I'm not drinking. I'm not showing my skin. She was a bit of everything. And I think that's why I loved her as a character. The actress that plays her, I'm really sorry. I can't remember her name, but I think she's going places because she's a really good actress. She really stood out amongst everyone. She was even better than Art the Clown. 
Um, she just stood head and shoulders above everyone. Her acting was great and she really brought Sienna to life. I think Sienna was a character that I'm never going to forget. And if you look at Art the Clown as well, I think he can be an iconic character if he's given to a massive production company. But at the moment, it's just an independent company. It's just an independent movie, unfortunately. And that's not a bad thing. You know, they are good films. I think if Art is taken to the bigger stage, he can become an iconic character. Um, I think David Thornton, who plays Art, or David Howard Thornton, who plays Art, he really made the character his own. Some of the most tense scenes in the film, he's not really doing much. There's a scene in this Halloween store where he's trying on sunglasses and it's quite funny, but it's also really eerie as well because Sierra is really uncomfortable with him standing there because she doesn't know if it's the real Art or if it's just a guy dressed as Art. So Art himself was terrifying in the film and that's good because that's where the name comes from the terrifier because he really does terrify its audiences, he really does terrify the characters in the movie and if he terrified anyone in the first movie and if you think that's what he done, he completely obliterates that in this one. Art was amazing in this film. Overall guys, I think I was blown away by this. It was an amazing film, it was really good and for an independent movie it was amazing on that aspect but I wasn't looking forward to Terrifier 2 to the point where I didn't even watch the trailer for it until last week. And then I was sent an early screener just to review the film and I'm glad I did. It was two hours and 18 minutes, not wasted at all. I think everyone involved in making this film should really get a clap because it was amazing to see what you can do with such a small budget. And like I said, there is films out there that have got multi-million dollar budgets that are sometimes okay, but this one was fantastic for what they had, the budget that they had, the the star pool that they had, I know that people like Felicia Rose was in it, even Anthony from Cobra Kai was in it before he probably will make it big. Um, everyone, it seemed like they all got together to make a really neat movie that's set around Halloween which is great. So if you haven't seen this movie guys, I highly recommend it. It's one of the most surprising films I've seen of the year and definitely a movie that you have to see around Halloween time. So if you've seen this movie guys, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of it. Do you think it is better than Terrifier 1? Let me know. And as always guys, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.